Hi, I'm Stephanie Lester and today we are needle felting the spring gnomes from the Crafty Kit Company. Welcome, I'm Stephanie Lester and today we're going to do a needle felting workshop using the kit from the Crafty Kit Company for the Spring Gnomes. Um, it's an easy peasy kit so I will make the assumption that you either have done very little needle felting or have never needle felted before um, so we'll go through it nice and slowly. Um, we also have a kit for um, Christmas Gnomes which was done slightly differently. So if you've done that one before, there's some different ways of doing things because we're involving pipe cleaners this time. So uh, that might be interesting if you've been through it before. Um, I have a couple of samples of some crazy guys that I've been playing around with. And also we've got the pictures on the box. Now, um, sometimes it's better to watch it all the way through and then come back and do it yourself but you might be someone who just likes to jump in and get going because let's face it the great thing about video is you can stop it and come back and um, do it all again if you have any questions please do ask um, in the comments under the YouTube unfortunately you can't actually share your makes there but if you want to share your makes which I would love to see um, please do come to my to teach tips and tutorials which I will <laughs> I will, that's a real tongue twister and I will put it underneath so that um, you can see that it's my Facebook group plus and um, the crafty kit company also have a needle filters Facebook group as well which I will also put details of below, below so that you could um, come along there and share your makes as well um, is there anything else I need to tell you other than it's this is all about having fun um, we try to um, make it as, well, I try to make it as if I'm actually doing a needle felting workshop with you. Um, so you get that kind of feeling that we are felting along together. That's the idea. I hope I'm successful. Um, anyway, so um, I think that's about it. I will be doing main, most of it from the overhead camera. So we'll go to that in a second. And then once the workshop's completed, I'll come back here so that I can actually um, say goodbye. Um, and if I think of anything else before then. Anyway, okay, I'm ready, hope you are. Over to the overhead camera. So here we are, um, back with the gnomes. <clears throat> So as we can see, we've got the spring gnomes this time. We have previously, here's my little samples of my spring gnomes. If I just compare them to previous gnomes, which were the Christmas gnomes. There we go. So <clears throat> what's the difference? So the difference is obviously the colours. We've got spring colours for our lovely um, spring gnomes. And um, also you'll notice the um, hat is rather longer and this hat has a nice little jaunty bend. And if we have a look at the um, front picture, we've got lots of different bends and um, different shapes. So, so the main difference is the pipe cleaner. So the pipe cleaner, which runs through this middle, enables us to do all the bendy bits and hopefully will also help um, during the creation. So um, our little Christmas gnomes, <coughs> we can still do a little Christmas gnome at Christmas with 
the um, pipe cleaners as well. But um, today we're concentrating, obviously, on our lovely little spring ones. So I'm just going to move these over here. Just thought it was a nice little comparison. There we go. Okay, so we have all these wonderful, wonderful colours for our spring gnomes. And we have our grey core, which you will see gives up the centre of the gnomes. Fabulous. So really, it's up to you as to how many you do, what colours you do, what designs. You might want to start by copying your favourite one um, off the front here or have a little um, look at gnomes on Pinterest and various um, or even in the um, Crafty Kit Company needle felting group to see other people who have made them get some ideas. Okay, and you might want to sketch them out and do all sorts. But basically you could easily make um, five or six. Now in this one I did use more wool because I wanted to actually extend out and make a bit about a flower. So it's completely up to you. And you might actually get to the point where you've run out of core because perhaps you've used it throughout and you've only got colours left. Well, there's nothing wrong with you using the colour as core to, in order to, to use up your bits and pieces. If you've got bits and pieces left over from a previous project, then this is the perfect perfect place to actually use them. Okay, right. So let's get started. Now, of course, you may not um, have done our previous gnomes and you may be a complete newbie and I will make the assumption that you are a newbie um, and that you haven't done the other ones. And that way I will hopefully cover absolutely everything that you need to know. So, as we can see, we have got ourselves five pipe cleaners. Now, bearing in mind the pipe cleaner is mainly required for the hat <clears throat> rather than the whole body, if you decided that perhaps you wanted to do, you know, smaller ones um, and just have the pipe cleaner in the hat part, you could easily do that and cut these in half and do it that way. Okay, right, let's get started. Let's move a little, well, husband and wife, I like to think of those, over there. So also, just to go through, so pipe cleaners, going to move those over here with all the lovely wool. I've at the moment, just put this on here so you get a nice <coughs> comparison of colours against the uh, dark. So also in your kit you will have your three needles, <coughs> two of which I have already just put a little bit of tape around so that I can use that because definitely for this project it's quite useful when we're doing the core to have the two needles purely because it felt twice as quickly and we've got our other individual one. And obviously it will depend how much detail you want. If you want to put on little things um, like the little stalks here, it's quite nice to have one needle. And also on this one where I've put little buttons on and things like that, it's quite good to have one needle too. Okay, so let's put, that's our mat obviously for, it's not our mat for stabbing on, it's our mat for protecting our work surface in case we go through. Because for most 3D needle felting, <coughs> we shouldn't really be reaching the mat. Um, obviously, if we are making a nice little piece to add on to our 3D, we may well be felting something flat into this that we then put on. But normally, when we're um, holding our pieces, let me pick up actually one of the... Um, if I'm stabbing into here, I'd be stabbing halfway through because our needles, you've got little notches down this end. And if you think about it, once I've gone into halfway, I've then actually putting the shaft in and putting that out the other side. So that's all that's doing 
is going right out the other side, whereas actually what we're trying to do is felt it denser actually into the middle. So that's why we always turn it all the way around <coughs> stabbing, but we shouldn't really stab all the way through. Hopefully that makes sense. As a beginner, if you're not um, quite sure how this little magic works, if you put the wall under a microscope, you will see that the strands of wool have actually got little scales on them, like little notches even, um, in the same way that the end of your uh, needle has notches. And so the process of stabbing the needle into the wall actually mixes the wool up and actually the different notches in the wall lock. And so as you do it tighter and tighter and it locks more and more and more, it goes tighter, tighter, smaller, smaller. And then you can't bring it back out again, which is why initially when you're doing it, and I always call it tacking, um, you can actually pull it out because <coughs> you've just very lightly done it. But once you've done all of them and they're squashed right in, it would be very difficult for you to pull out if you've done it that tightly. Okay, so the other decision to make is because um, we are making five. I find it really useful, especially when I'm um, you're doing beginner projects and you're really not sure whether you're using too much wool or not enough wool. It's quite good to, let's fold that in half. Let's fold that in half again because I just realized I've got a piece there. Is that and to divide your wool up at the start well okay if I went one two three four five that one will probably be a bit smaller but hey I always like to have them different sizes anyway you know might be a the little one of the family so I'm going to split this bit into four and <coughs> that's going to be my fifth piece so let me put my fifth piece over here let me hold that up and once again don't pull there because you've basically got hold of one end of the strand and the other end of the strand and you're not going to be able to pull it apart. What you need to do is bring your hands out further and then just pull and then they will separate where they naturally do. Okay, same with the next one. Find the halfway point, pull out and there we go. <coughs> halfway point, pull out. Lovely. Okay, so I'm going to keep one of those. So decisions, shall we do? Shall we do one off? I think we should do which one? Which one shall we do? So, well, I do quite like the idea of the bendy little one here. I do quite like that bendy little one there too. Okay, so I'm going to do a bendy one, but what colours, what colour way round should I do? So I'm definitely going to do a bendy one, so that's my core. Um, let me pick my um, pipe cleaner and let me decide on colours clearly haven't got a plan here. So um, I think I'm going to go for a blue hat. I'm going to, shall we have colour down the bottom? Because you see I've actually put colour on the kind of dress or the whatever they're wearing as well. You can leave it um, grey if you want to. So I'm going to have blue hat. I'm going to have a mauve beard and I'm going to just have grey body. Grey beard and hair, blue hat, and then I can use the other colours to maybe do some little designs on if I feel like it when we get there. But that's the whole point. If you've come up with your main colours, I'm going to do hat and hair. <coughs> then you can do whatever you want later. Think, oh no, actually I'm going to put this colour, that colour. All good fun. Okay, so Let's get on.
Okay, so here we are. Just been got myself a glass of water. Where do we start? <coughs> so let's have a little look at our instructions. So we have our pipe cleaner. And obviously we're not going to make, um, well, not obviously at all, but we're not going to actually make our gnome with his hat that long. Um, we're going to make our gnome with his hat and everything, which will be that long. So in order to make that nice and strong, we're going to twist that together. And then we've got <coughs> a nice strong pipe cleaner which can go up through the hat now if you wanted to make a slightly longer hat i would suggest what you did was bend it there so that you've got a bit out the top because that's going to be your thinnest bit so you wouldn't need quite so strong there anyway so i would just play with it from that point of view okay right so let me put my two main colors up there so the core and we are going to as per if you look at um, number three and four in your pictures in your instructions now we are going to make that um, main body but also what i'm going to do is i'm going to get you to actually do a bit more up the length rather than just doing a bulk at the end and then add on the hat. We're going to build up the whole length and then we can um, colour it afterwards. I personally just find it easier this way. So here we go. I'm going to split that off. I hope you saw what I was doing there. Um, and I've got a nice long piece. Now also what I'm going to do, you might notice, I've got a paintbrush here. Now, you don't necessarily have to be a paintbrush and you don't have to use it either, but I'm just going to show you um, a way of you can make this easier because I find that sometimes when I've asked people to wrap round a pipe cleaner, because it's quite bendy, um, it can get a bit, oh, not comfortable, let's just say. Now, if you're au fait with that and you're fine, then just carry on but I just want to show you another way of where you could do it if you just needed something a little bit more secure okay so if you held your pipe cleaner next to your paintbrush or um, you know you can get those um, oh skewers um, like wooden or plastic even no, not plastic not for um, barbecue skewers that'd be a bit silly wouldn't it um, but okay shiny metal or even just smooth wooden ones I've quite often used those just to hold it against and I will show you what I mean because I need it to be thicker down this end and thinner up this end so I'm going to initially concentrate here and then I'm going to go up a little bit okay and finish off so let me show you that's the great thing about the video. You can watch me and then come back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that, put that pipe cleaner just a little bit above the end so that I don't get the pipe cleaner sticking out the bottom. And quite often I like to um, felt in a bit anyway. So about, probably put him about three quarters of an inch up. Okay, and now I'm going to start off I've got my finger there. I'm going to wrap it round. Once I've wrapped it round a little bit, there we go. Now I'm going to swap into that hand because I am actually right handed, to be honest. And now I'm going to just wrap up here. Okay, now I'm going to grab my needle. She says she's going to grab her needle. There they are. Right. So I'm going to grab my single, single needle. There it is. Put this on top of that. 
I'm going to grab my single needle and just lightly. Now, bearing in mind, I don't want to go through to um, pipe cleaner or um, paintbrush. So I'm angling it so that it's just, can you see, just going along the edge. A little bit of tacking it together. I mentioned about tacking earlier. Tack those together. Now, this hasn't um, pulled apart, but let's make sure um, it has no chance of pulling apart just by doing a little tacking, tacking stab rather than a tacking stitch. Now, it might want to come off the end bit there, so I've just put my thumb on the end to keep that on. Okay. You see, I slightly hit the um, paintbrush occasionally because I'm not stabbing it fiercely and just lightly going in. There is no reason to stab fiercely. It doesn't stab it any harder whether you hack at it or do it nice and slowly. Right, so I'm now going to pull that in half and pull that in half again because I'm going to initially just twirl that a little bit. You know, the way that I rolled it, can just tighten it up a little bit. So if you've um, wrapped around and it's quite lightly, that's what you can do is just tighten it up a little bit just by turning it a little bit more and then taking your little needle and just stabbing. So I did catch the pipe cleaner then. You can tell it went <laughs> but only slightly because I'm <coughs> doing it into the edge. Okay. Right. So I'm going to add a little bit more. This is where I do you know I I get confused as to whether I'm left-handed or right-handed sometimes because I'm going like this. I'm going to wrap it around my left hand and then I think, but I'm right-handed, so surely I would do it that way. Anyway, let me show you both ways. <laughs> we can do it left and right here. So let me hold it in my right hand and then just pull that around to where I think the body would go. And just tack that in again at the top. So I'm just doing my little tacking stitches because until I take it off the um, paintbrush, just, I can't get into the centre. So I'm just going around the edge. There we go. And once again, let's make sure that end is in as far as my paintbrush end. Is there. It's as well to have the paintbrush at the end so it'll be easier for me to pull out, of course. It's kind of a bit late piece of advice, really, isn't it? Should have mentioned that earlier. Right, okay, so we've got two more pieces. I've got. Okay, so I'll do it in my right hand. This. Mm. There we go. Wrap that round there. Like that. And that's with my right hand. You can see my confusion about whether I'm left handed or right handed. Not quite sure why that is. I think it's because I was taught to needle felt by someone who's left handed. And I just followed what they did. And, uh, and then at one point they mentioned that if I was right-handed, I might want to use the other hand. <clears throat> but I'd already got used to doing it that way. So um, I just carried on. And now I, I get confused as to whether it's the way I was shown or whether it's the way I need to show you. 
at the end of the day you do whatever's comfortable because this is you know one of those little projects where you don't need to go too crazy okay all right so I say we've still got our nice little I'm just gonna tighten that little bit up there a bit more just thinking for when I take it off because I want that to be fairly thin at the end okay and the next piece So, should I perhaps put that there, hold that with my left hand, and then wind that round with my right hand? Do you know, I find it easier holding it there. I'm sorry if I'm getting confused in terms of what hand I'm doing it in. So basically, hold it in whatever hand you like, and wrap it in whatever hand you like. But the idea is that because you've got the solid paintbrush you have that ability to actually hold it quite solidly there we go and because it's quite um, small it won't be leaving a huge gap in the middle and in fact when we pull it out it will just splurge into the middle and take up the space which has been left behind okay just neatened up that bottom bit is still there you see the little bottom if you remember my um my pipe cleaner was about um, three quarters of a centimetre, if not a whole centimetre up. There we go. Thing is, it doesn't need to be solid. Once, oh, that's another thing, yes, for beginners. How hard does it need to be? Well, it doesn't need to be hard. Let me... Um, as you these are quite squidgy you know they're not squidgy as in they'll come apart but they are nice and squidgy and in fact my one's over here yeah that's nice and squidgy too see even more squidgy in fact I think that might be yeah nice so perhaps that gives you an idea I mean basically you need to felt it so that it doesn't unravel you don't want it to be so um light that or squidgy on the bottom that it falls over so it's just getting that balance in fact when we take the paintbrush out we can have a look and see how easily it stands up and adjust it all the way along as we're doing it anyway right so final piece which I'm going to do this way around for no reason whatsoever and that's it. just adding that on one of the things I'll also say is that you know like all these things you could just pick up a lump of wool and start felting it I like to do add smaller bits number one I can change my mind as I go also um, the gradual felting of it as you put it together actually uh, means you're felting each layer a little bit as you go and you're just adding to it so you're just you are every time you're felting another bit in felting the bit underneath a little bit more as well as felting the bit that you're doing within so it actually gets a nice even thickness you don't just keep stabbing I think sometimes it was one of the things I know when my um, granddaughter very first started she um, needle felting 
she found it quite annoying that she could just continually stab and nothing seemed to be happening. Well, I think when you add bits on like this, you don't get that because you're always adding a bit, it's getting a bit thicker or, you know, if you're adding a little bit of a shape somewhere, then you're definitely doing something. Right, now then, let's make sure we've got this bottom because we are about to pull the paintbrush out. You can see the rings, can't you? Like a tree telling you its age. You could add another layer, couldn't you, every year of a different colour, make it a rainbow body. Not to tell you how old you were. Right. Okay, see, that's still nice and squidgy and this bit up here exceptionally so and in fact I'm just going to do a little bit now of round the edge all the way up because I'm about to take out my paintbrush and whilst this isn't meant to be fully felted because I'm going to put some colour over the top it's just nice to know it's not going to fall apart okay right are we ready for our big moment? Okay, so I'm going to pull it initially. There you go, coming out nicely. Just holding it along there, pulling him out. Lovely, and there we go. Cute. Oh, stands up. Does he stand up on the hard surface? Yes, he does. Excellent. Right, so we still have our pipe cleaner all the way through. Fabulous. Now, I'm just going to do a little bit of stabbing up here because that's been the biggest. Taking it out of the centre down here, obviously it's much bigger around it and that's just gone whew, into the centre. Here, I had a very thin layer around it and so taking it out will affect the structure a bit more. Even though we have our pipe cleaner in there, I'm just going to do a little bit more consolidation let's call it and we're going to add some color to that did we decide no I think so I think we did as you can see I'm just very lightly I'm going to squish that in a minute so fingers there's a thing um, I probably stab myself more when I'm doing these videos than I do when I'm doing my own work but that's obviously just because I get sidetracked so that's the thing you can sit and listen to the telly while you're doing this but don't watch <laughs> for obvious reasons okay there we go that's cute let's say you could still do your turning if you want to make it nice and tight you, know, you can still squidge it around like that if you think oh I'd like to make that much smaller at the top you can just twist it in the direction that you um, wound it on in the first place just to give you that right so fingers yes as you can see I've got my fingers very close to the needle so you can use the finger protectors, the little leather finger protectors. I personally do not get on with them very well, so I don't use them. Now, I have in the past, when I've accidentally, in fact, I've got a bit of a cut there where I accidentally cut myself with a knife and had a plaster around. And it was quite useful because on that finger if I did accidentally stab the thumb and um, that thumb was protected so you could just put um, a couple of plasters around your main fingers if um, you're worried at all and the only other thing I do and it's not really relevant for this part of a project is if I'm doing things like ears or a leaf and I want to um, stab down the end I bend over a business card and put the piece in the center of that and then stab down with the business card protecting my fingers anyway 
so there we go so we have our sort of he's kind of standing up isn't he yeah excellent <laughs> right okay what are we going to do first are we going to do the hat first or are we going to do the body well I'm going to do the hat first so let me explain I'm going to put the curler up here for the hat and then add the color for the body now obviously you can leave the body gray if you want to because obviously we're going to put um we're going to put a blue hair and mustache and everything on aren't we um but i quite often like to because it doesn't take that much wall to actually cover up and we've got quite a lot of color um to do something on the body and once we've done the color there the body there and then we can do a few details and then i quite often like to do i think i'll show you here with this one um when i put the rim of the hat i put that on separately on top so i do the color here color underneath put the beard and nose and everything on and then i put the little rim round so it kind of covers up any stabbings or things that i've done to add hair and everything else okay <clears throat> Have a drink of water. I seem to have a bit of a frog in my throat today. I'm not sure why. Okay. So let's pour some wool off. So firstly, I'm going to pour that in half. And then I'm going to pour that out. And once again, it's best to work in smaller amounts now, if you get a little black, there's just little bits of vegetable matter in the wall, which despite all the cleaning and carding, there are still little bits of veg matter stay in. It's just, it's just the way it is when it comes to wall. Okay. So I keep it nice and thin because I like to add in layers as I've explained earlier because it just means let's stab this end in here and notice I'm not worried about where that's come to because as I said I'm adding a color and I will also add the rim of the hat <clears throat> because just by adding a couple of layers even means you felted it over twice now this is where you might want to take note of how thick you do or don't want a particular area and when you get to the top okay there you go so I start by you know it's always a little bit uneven the edges of where the wall met is often just a little bit raised so I stab down there first okay just gently tacking in and I'm, I am going into just halfway okay number one that means that hopefully I won't um, stab the pipe cleaner too much and also I am trying to stab into the middle of the piece and not out the other side. Okay. Can occasionally just hear it hit that little pipe cleaner. But once again, by aiming to go halfway in, you're not launching the needle at it, so it tends so very you hear it and or feel it and lift it back up pretty quickly now one thing I haven't mentioned is that broken needles the biggest reason that people break needles is because you put it um, in at one angle move it and try to take it out you will bust it because as you will see when you look you've got quite a, a strong shaft here but the actual notched end is really quite thin and it will break very easily if you and wool is quite tough so if you've got it in and you move it it will bend and once it's bent it's weakened and 
and they will break all in one foul swoop. So here I am just neatening up my little bumpy <laughs> bumpy bits. Right now I'm going to pull it a little bit tighter once again at the end. Now if you've got a lot left over when you get just pull it off don't worry about it because this is just our first coat nothing will be going to waste Again, that was me scraping past the pipe cleaner. There we go. I'm just doing a little bit more. I'm thinking that I'm going to be putting a nice little bobble on the end here. So um, I won't need to make it a nice neat little point. But I don't mind having a bit of uh, fluff wall left at the end because it gives me something nice to felt into. Okay, right. So that's nice. Now I'm going to take the other small piece and do the same again. I think this time I'm going to make sure. Let me start a little bit lower. Make sure I get a bit of thickness. Not thickness as such, but just a little bit more. And then stop it there. Tack it in. Okay. There we go. A little fluffy ends again. Always focus on my fluffy ends. turning as we go as I say so that you're doing it even all the way around nice light strokes just in case we tap into that pipe cleaner in the middle just thinking about the little bend that I might want to put in it Halfway up. Okay. There was me thinking I was going to use the um, two needles a lot, and of course, because of the pipe cleaner, I haven't. I'm just using my little single one. But we always have the option, just in case. Okay, there we go. Right, that's a nice start. We can always play around and check it out later and do extra bits because we've got plenty of colour. Right, so we're going to do a blue beard. So I think I'm going to do a white. 
Now, this is an interesting concept, isn't it? Do I want him to be completely white? Oh, I've decided it's a him. Okay. Um, do I want him to be completely white or do I want to use a bit of the kind of oatmeal colour or do I want to make him a bit pinkier? So let me show you what I mean. So this, usually we use this <coughs> for the nose and we still can. Let me see if I can. So yeah, all our little gnomes here have a nice little fleshy colour noses. Now you'll notice on Christmas I gave my little um, Christmas tree gnome. Excuse me. <coughs> my Christmas tree gnome, a little red nose. Um, so you could do that as well. So I'm now thinking I might want to make his little face, his little body a bit pinkier. Let me show you. So, <coughs> bear in mind that's going to make an awful lot of noses. It can afford a piece. So I'm going to bring a piece of this and I'm going to bring a piece of the pink. Okay. And like we would with paints, we can actually mix our colours. So let me start with half of each to start with and then <clears throat> just start mashing it together really. It doesn't need to be done in any uh, particular way, bearing in mind when we're adding it to the piece and stabbing, we're mixing it up. So how much we're mixing it up. Okay, so this is where I wanted to just use half because I wanted to see just how pink that is. That's not, it's a little bit pink, but not hugely pink. So I'm gonna put another Break that in half again and do a bit more. So just mixing it about. <coughs> and then I can just decide. We can do this with any colour. So this is where you mix, you know, your um, blue and your yellow and make green. Very clever. Anyway, that just gives me a little pink here. So I don't know if you can see from there, but that's my original oatmeal. That's my pink, but I just gave little pinky bits. Okay, I shall use that just to start off with because I don't want to put masses around together. I'm just going to put that over <clears throat> hold it down. I'm not going to lift it up and stab it in because then I've got to punch through an awful lot of air to get it down. So I'll hold it down. Stab that in. Okay. Just say because I'm aware I'm going to give him a little rim on his hat, which we will do with the with the mauve. Okay, once again, I can feel that pipe cleaner in the center. So I'm sort of halfway going round rather than right into the center because right into the center is where that pipe cleaner is, which you might be tapping into yourself. Okay, hold that down. So it's quite nice go around doing a nice thin piece because you can always come back afterwards and um, add a little bit if there's too much grey showing through or perhaps you like the little bit of grey coming through you know you do what you want to do I'm just going to go over the other half once again hold it down Yeah. 
and then I can spread it a little bit see where the gaps are in a minute fill those in let's say once again because we're adding it bit by bit just as that nice gradual felt of course on these little gnomes we've got obviously got a nice little nose you could of course give them little ears if you wanted to give them little feet all sorts of little additions it's completely up to you so you make big ones small ones little family so you've got your parents grandparents children your little gnome family because the thing about gnomes is that certainly and little Scandinavian gnomes over here we think of them as for Christmas because that's when we get the little red-hatted ones out but actually according to the Scandinavian folklore gnomes protect your homestead all year long it's just at Christmas and we shouldn't forget them at Christmas we should put out because traditionally basically in the countryside they used to look after the um, you know homestead livestock everything they would sort of live in the barn or outside so um, the homeowner would put a bowl of porridge with very importantly a large knob of butter in because they love butter on Christmas Eve and that was by way of appreciation of all their efforts to you know look after your home and your animals throughout the year um, and set them up for another year now if you didn't do that you may find that little tricks will be paid on you during the year for instance, if you keep losing your keys and things like that, they may hilariously have hidden them. There we go. Always like to make sure that bottom's nice and neat. Okay, just gonna see if there's anywhere. Yeah, so it's still a little bit faded here so I'm going to add a bit more okay and then I'm going to start planning so while I'm doing this I'm going to start thinking about the hair so am I going to do a moustache and a beard long hair short hair lots of choices one um, I did do a little Viking one of the Christmas ones before he was very cute with his plaits and his round hat okay Of course there is absolutely no need for you to have done the mixing if you didn't want to I just wanted to show you that so that um, if you came across another project or let's say you didn't have quite the right color you would know that you would have that ability to do that if needed OK, 
go. So he's got quite variegated um, body tones, which I think he would have because part of him would be out in the weather and part of it would be all covered up. Lovely. Right, now, let's have a little look at our pictures again. So we've got some hair and beards um, and all sorts, haven't we? Okay, and my ones over here, um, my little girl, she got a little wisp of hair there and a little plait out the back. But um, Mr. Gnome, he just had long hair and a tash. Right, so we are going to have blue. So let me pull a section off and think, right, okay. I think, first of all, let's think about the shape and everything of our hat. So I think, I think I'd quite like to have it bending a little bit there. Okay, so I'm thinking his front of his face is gonna be there. So I can help emphasize those um, creases when we come to do the rim of the hat. We'll also emphasize those little creases and make it thicker and everything there too. Okay. So I am thinking, am I gonna have I think what we'll do is we will have like a hair coming out to the side like that and a bit of a beard down here. Okay, so his nose is going to go there. So let me couple of stabs in the middle. Bring it in. And then I'm going to put the nose on top so that will actually help hold that in. But just to see whether that's the right. There we go. Nice. Okay, now we can put our little on there and we'll do ourselves a little bit. Now a little bit's likely to sort of be a bit pointed isn't it? So we put the nose on afterwards once we've so I'm going to just stab halfway so that I can then bend that down. Do that like that and then that bit can just bend down. And then we have a really lovely, don't want to tap that in too much. And then we've got a really lovely beard. Okay. So, do we think? and then we would put his little nose in there. So I would quite like to give him a little bit of hair down the back as well, because I think he would have a nice bit of hair down the back. So once again, across the crease, I'm going to um, Bring the hat down there 
which will help keep that down too. There we go. So, yeah. So we will be putting our little rim all the way around there, which will be great. Okay, there we go. That's me. You could, of course, have a bit more hair around the side because he isn't necessarily hasn't necessarily got a comb over. Could have lots of hair. Why not? light on here because I'm not sure. I've got quite enough light. One sec. Squeaky chair. Move out the way. Oh. Microphone battery falls on the floor. Very good. Okay. So there we go. Very trendy. Right. Now, the nose. Okay, so I am going to give him... Am I going to give him a little... No, I'm not going to give him a pink. I'm going to give him a proper oatmeal because his nose will have been out in the weather. So I'm going to pull that in half. And I'm going to take that little piece and I'm going to tie a little knot in it because it's my favourite thing is to tie a knot in a piece of wool because it gives you that ability to then just roll that up nicely and stab it into a little ball gives you that nice central area to stab into even though it's you know a tiny little nose rather than stabbing into midair that's quite nice well you can I say they you can give your little gnome any size nose that you fit if you want to give him a longer nose then do that I am quite sure gnomes have all sorts of shapes of noses. Okay. There we go. I'm leaving a bit of um, straggly fluff just because it would help me to attach it to the body. It isn't absolutely required, but it just gives you that extra something to, right, size-wise. Yes, I think so. So I'm going to obviously attach it right in here. So I'm going to start by putting it down sideways because that's actually at the top so that I can stab in my loose bits so that whatever I do from then on I know it's attached there we go lovely right now let's bring it on top so now what I'm doing is I'm holding the top and I am just going to tack almost underneath. It's the sides, but to the underneath. Yeah. So I'm not stabbing it down the sides and into, I'm stabbing it sides into the center underneath. 
because I still want it to be a nice round little shape. Okay, now if you go to the top. So if I have to take anything off down the sides, I'm still focusing it on that underneath. And then you end up with a nice little round nose. What we don't do is stab right in the centre and flatten it. Okay. That's quite a nice little face, isn't it? How cute. Very cute. I don't know why. I've just I've looked at him and thought Billy Connolly, as if. <laughs> Poor old Billy Connolly. <laughs> Thinking what? as if Billy Connolly would be watching, but hey, you know, I dream. Right, now, we are going to now make sure we get this rim. And um, I wanted to bring a bit of extra up so that we can sort of emphasize these folds, because if you see here in this lovely little one here, he's definitely got little folds, doesn't he, in his hat as it bends over. This one's just bent at the top, so less so, but I quite like that. So we need to get some more. Well, we've got bits left over, I say more. So what we're going to do is going to very cleverly flatten it out. And this is one of those times when we do actually f felt towards the mat, although we try not to felt into it too much. Because what I want to do is make this so it's wide enough to go all the way around because I'm gonna make basically a rim to go all the way around and then it will will join it at the back okay so this this is going to be the rim and I'm going to fold it over and then we're going to felt that there so in order to help that rim be quite nice and thick I'm going to take a little bit out of the center could of course put a little bit of pipe cleaner in there if you wanted. But I'm going to just stab that down. So I'm just stabbing in the centre. Hopefully I haven't got my arms too much in the way there. I've not stabbed that bit down yet. Stab into, I have stabbed into the felt mat just a little bit. in there. Fold that bit back in. Oh, the blue just took a dive off the table. <laughs> Doesn't help having all these flouncy bits, does it, on my on my top, really. There we go. Okay, now let me fold that over. Now I want to keep this fairly rounded, so I'm just really wanting to tack it down the other side. And I am still very lightly doing that, as you can hopefully see. I'm not going all the way in, I, I really am just going like this. Because I'm just trying to connect up. And I'm going to do a little light bit here. I don't want it to be so once again I really am just lightly touching it just trying to encourage a bit of um, I was gonna say tangulation is that such a thing tangulation okay just lightly pull it off turn it over and once again I'm gonna just the other side just to emphasize that rim and then just do a little tacking so with these needles which come with the kit they're nice and light which means it won't be over 
doing this sort of thing. If you had one of the really strong needles, it would have completely flattened that. Okay. Now. This is going to be too much, so I'm going to hold it there and pull a bit off. Okay, right. So it's still, I can still stretch it a bit so if it doesn't quite fit, but halfway here. Now. we need to do a bit of stretching, which is fine. I wouldn't make a very good um, tailor, would I? For making hats. It will ride up with wear, so let me stretch that a little bit. Let's see whether I need to, whether I've stretched it so much I've lost my now then, I need to bring that down a bit. So this is where we play around with the look. Of course, we needed to cover up where we tacked that hair in. Okay. So I might, that little bit I took off, just add that on there. make up for my bad judgment. Okay, that's good. Just a little fanciness. Okay, right. We did flatten it a little bit, but it's okay because we've got so much here. And now, okay, so, and now I've, I'm angling it down. As you can see, I'm going, I'm not going in like that. I'm angling it down. So basically, if I'm, if I'm felting into the center, I'm moving and tangling the wall towards the center of the work. If I'm angling it down, I'm moving the wall downwards. And in this case, because I'm actually trying to create this bulge, shall we say, I don't really want to go straight down. I want to help emphasize this here. Looks a bit like um, um, a gonk, doesn't he, at the moment? Okay, we can sort you out properly in a minute. So I wanted a bit more around this bit here because I wanted to emphasize the bend. So squish it down. Squish it down. Got to get my two needles for this. And then where it joins, just make sure. Tap that down. Once again, I am pushing it flat onto that. onto the hat once again. I want to make sure I'm pushing it down. I don't want to lift this up. It needs to be that way. And at the moment I'm still going nice and lightly because I know I still have 
my pipe cleaner in the middle. Okay. We'll have a check in a minute and see whether we've got enough wool in the right place and decide what we're going to pull around. One thing which actually um, I was told to have around and it makes sense is an old needle a big needle not um, a tiny thin one but a robust one and I shall show you why in a second because I'm quite sure there will be an opportunity in a minute to show you because I rarely get things right first time I'm nearly always adjusting things moving things about and certainly in this kind of project and providing you haven't felted something into within an inch of its life you can make adjustments right let's have a quick look okay we've got bit more over there. This can still come around. Yeah. Come around from the back. Give a bit more substance to that bottom part of the hat hold that down so it's much easier if you hold it flat felt it in place as I say otherwise you're stabbing into midair and it takes an awful lot of effort just to get it to lay down so lay it flat and just felt it in place. to give you a bit of a flouncy tash yes we've got quite a nice little bit around that let's neaten that little back bit up we either neaten it up or make a feature out of it whichever one we decide to do in this case I'm just going to neaten it up and in fact kept to think of it our little gnome would have probably leant back on the back of his hat it would be a little bit squashed some pieces okay so I wanted to just make a bit more of a thing about that bend oh yes you see how because I've added bits the moment I bend it it gets a little bendy yeah okay so I'm going to assume crease there
go that looks good doesn't it so where it creased I've literally just stabbed in those little lines just to emphasize that it's bent over and that was caused just by adding some extra wool in this area rather than it being tightly felted lightly felted and then uh, it automatically bent over so that's cute very cute we like that so we're going to give him a little bobble on his hat and um, as I say you might want to give him a little decoration in the rim maybe let's pull that little blue bit across there I'm sure he's got a mono brow okay so color of his bubble color of his bubble deep thought did i hear you say green or did i hear you say pink i think pink yes so similar to the nose Pull off a stretch. And then pull it out. Tie a knot. Okay, and then just wrap that around. Get a single needle. Maybe just think of the song single lady then single needle perhaps we should invent our own little ditty around that i won't try and sing it because um i wouldn't do that to you because i absolutely cannot sing gone are the days when I used to get up and um, sing an audition for any part going. Gosh, those, they were many years ago. I've got that song on my brain now. Actually, the song I, um, I play in the morning when I get up is my, um, my rallying song is This Is Me from The Greatest Showman, my current little favourite. We saw it at the weekend, at home, not out and about, for obvious reasons. Um, loved it. And make him quite a nice little because I think he'd be quite a big bauble of course if you've got any bells or anything like that you could just um, add that add a little add a little bell that would be cute one of the things that um, I used to quite like adding was little ears and um, when I add these, um, I used to put them up through this bit, so where the rim met, you just have them sticking up here. So they would have had you know, a little hole in their hat, but to keep their ears warm for those harsh winters. You don't want them sticking out, do you? Get them frozen. little ball there we go now great that's good so I'm going to neaten up the end so my 
um, pipe cleaner and it's about there. So I've got a nice little bit that I can twirl around. So another thing, if you're trying to pick up wool and you're just stabbing in, it doesn't need to be picking it up, twirl your needle around and it will pick it up. It's almost making a nice little cup, isn't it, for attaching the I'm minding my fingers there, if you notice I pulled them out of the way because I felt the needle come through the side. I wasn't very accurate with my downward motion into the hat. I'm obviously neatening up the edges but I'm also helping to make that top bit nice and Stable, right? Okay. Now I've probably got a bit too much there. Let's tuck a bit more of that in. attaching um, this down as much as I can before I think right it's attached so once again I'm doing the whole let's um, attach as much of that loose in because then we know it's attached and then everything else is just making it look good so I'm just going round making sure that's in, stabbing it down and not into my fingers. Now, now that I've done that, I'm going to squish it down a bit. And now once again, as before, concentrate on bringing it down and into the center. down and into the center and that side too down and into the center I've already got my head in the way there I think sorry just trying to see so that I'm going round the sides down and into that center bit down so that I can properly shape that around the bottom bit make it nice and round roll him over Bubble. Right now, I'm going to felt that 
mauve bit, which was what I kept felting into, just to make that as smaller as I can by centering it. There we go. And then we've got a little little bubble on top. And we've got that nice little bend with his little bubble on top. Cute. So, make sure we're not dropping bits, no. So, now, do we want to give him perhaps a little leaf here or a little heart or give him some ears it's all the same because it's all going to be basically stabbed into the um the different areas so if i was doing ears i would um take a little piece of the let me put it down because you'll be able to see it better on the black because his ears are going to be, in this case, they're going to be triangular. So I would draw like the shape of a Christmas tree. And then I would fold that over. This is possibly too big, but it's probably quite good for demonstrating. I'm just I'm trying to do it as lightly as I can without felting it too much actually into that piece of felt in the same way that I would if it was on the um, foam bed. Now another thing that I quite often do here is if you're struggling to get this as flat as you would like it to. Once you've done a bit of stabbing and you're fairly happy. Now this is where I would put the um, piece between um, a folded business card. Just putting that in the top there. In order to protect your fingers. Do as I say, not as I do, obviously, at the moment. Just need to that up slightly. Right, and I would put it in there and rub it like an iron, basically. Just giving it a nice heated iron. And as I say, I would tidy up the edges. But I would put a folded business card in order to protect your fingers. I'm hoping I'm not going to demonstrate to you the reason why you shouldn't do it like this. So um, I would basically have it a bit smaller than that, I think, probably about that. And then I would have tucked it in coming out of there. I think what we'll do is give him a tiny, tiny little leaf coming out of his hat. Okay, so I'm literally just going to felt the tiniest of shapes and I'm going to do it down here so you can see it again because it's just going to be a long little shape. To be a leaf just tucked out of the front of his um, little hat that either 
he liked and put there. Or that caught, caught in his hat when he was rummaging for mushrooms. Basically, you can, I mean, you can even put little feet on them just by once again making little shapes and having them stick out the bottom. You can put any number of bits and pieces on. It's completely up to you and your imagination. sort of fern leaf I think because it's um, quite fluffy and we're just going to add that to the crease there into his little hat so that up and then uh, that will just be his little leaf in his hat there you go so there we have one little gnome it's completely up to you um, what colors and everything that you do the important thing is to have fun um, and I know I use the um, paintbrush handle included with the pipe cleaner but you can just use the pipe cleaners you don't need the handle i just personally find it a useful thing to wrap around to get that good old solid get going to start with um obviously here i have um, gone quite extreme and i did it very long now i actually used more wool i used enough um, wool for two gnomes to get this going all the way up here with the grey um, and I felted it fairly um, hard but quite thin because I, I wanted it thicker and squishier so I could do those folds at the bottom there um, but that was quite thin because I wanted to then add these little decorations which is just like 2D needle felting once again very lightly tacking the bits on and that was a little flower at the top for her the little flower girl there you go so yeah play to your heart's content and uh, oh, try not to have a fall over that's a good point are you actually going to stand up my little love he's a bit weighty over to that side because we've added that right okay then in that case we can do a little jaunty angle can't we we should There we go. Or you can put a little weight in the bottom, obviously, if you want to. I'm just thinking. I like to get mine to stand as much as I can. Ah, there you go. Just put the little angle at the bottom there, just so that he could 
weights over that way a bit but either that or you can always add um you know a little weight in the bottom if you've got it too much or i could actually just bend that back over yeah and then stay up <laughs> there you go so who would have thought a little bit of wool at the top of a hat would have had that effect but there you go okay so i think we are done so here we are here's my little fella that i was needle felting not sure what colors or design that you decided to do on yours but hopefully um you got to the end and are feeling happy with your makes and as i said before at the beginning really love to see them um so you can come along and share in either of the facebook groups which is Tutix Tips and Tutorials or the Crafty Kit Company Needle Felters Group. That would be brilliant. Otherwise, very much hope to see you again on the next video.